welcome back to the channel now in the last video we ran some tests basically so we started you know testing our application and like i said the first thing you do before you build an application into a docker image is basically all right you know you have to uh first of all you have to test your application and make sure that your application all right would you know um has passed certain tests before you say and you want to build it all right into a docker all right image okay now we've done that part already but then one thing that i want to show us is this now we've tested our application but of course we also you know um the report of the test that was generated right we should actually be stored you know somewhere okay so that if you want to access the report you should be able to access that report you know anytime that you want to access it and just basically you know see you know if a job failed all right if there's any stage that failed and things like that all right you want to be able to visualize you know all those kind all right of things so now how do we add that you know test to our pipeline right so these are pipeline right here so if i want to save basically the test that the test you know command actually generated all right basically i want to have something like this where i can visualize you know if the test passed if it failed right i want to be able to see that all right you know within my gitlab all right yeah, instance uh, space there so what do i do so here i can use a keyword all right that is called artifact all right so the keyword name is called Actified. of course if you're using auto completion it's going to give you you know all of these things but i mean we're, i'm going to just remove you know all of this right so i'm going to come here and then i'm going to say when okay so the when there basically is a keyword just like we saw with the workflow rule so basically i'm going to say when which means i want to generate all right these you know artifact always like what we saw here okay so i want this session to be you know to run you know every time now another thing you need to configure is the path so where do you want to store all right your artifact okay so here i'm going to configure a path and then i'm going to say i want to store my artifact inside of the apt all right folder and the name that i want to give to it is junit all right junit dot xml okay so that's the name i want to give to so just something like this right so i want that to also be stored all right into my app folder in my gitlab repository okay and then also another thing that i can also do now if i push this as is let's see what we have all right with this one so i'm going to say git all right commit i think am all right i'm going to just say active facts all right you know add it basically okay all right so let's push that and let's see all right what these will do for us okay so let's see okay so now let's go back to pipeline and let's see what we have so the job is triggered um so let's see what that would do for us all right so the pipeline is running as expected already now if everything is fine of course it means that if you go into your app uh, your app, app folder basically right you should see uh, a file that is called junit all right or xml okay and of course within the pipeline as well you can also download you know any artifact that your job actually generates or produce okay so let's just wait and see uh, what will happen with this one okay so all right so now that is completed so we can see that it passed so i'm going to click on this job all right so i'm going to click on that job and right here we can see that it actually uploads all right an artifact so uploading artifact and then it says found one matching artifact files and directory and then of course that was generated and if you look at it here i can actually browse i can download the artifact or i can keep all right this activate basically right so now in the last job that we ran if you come back here to this job all right and we look at the job that we ran before then this one all right so if i click on this other job right you will see that we didn't have anything like that here all right we didn't have anything like that but now because i specify i specified all right the activate keyword all right that generated all right an activate that is now downloadable so I can download it and then upload it into, you know, maybe your Sonar Cube server or any visualization server that you have. Another thing that I'd like to show us here is basically, all right, if you click on that, now, if you, see, you can see now that there's a download button here. This other one didn't have any download button, right? So here, if I click on downloads, all right, it's basically going to want to download, all right, the Actifat for me, all right, in a compressed, all right, format, okay? 
So that is one thing that we must note. Now, another thing that I want to do also is that I want the artifacts, you know, basically I want the reports, you know, basically, you know, shown, um, you know, more like a report generally, right? Under the artifact session, as you know, um, apart from just storing it or being able to download the artifact, right? Being able to download the report, I also want to be able to see it, all right, you know, on my um, GitLab instance as well. So I'm going to come here, I'm going to say report, and then the report I want to see is JUnit, all right, and then I'm going to specify the location of that report. So this is where the report, all right, is stored. So basically, I want to be able to see, you know, whether the test passed, whether the test failed, right, within uh, my pipeline, all right? So that's basically what I want to see. So let's commit this, all right, and let's see, and let's push, all right, that, and let's see what this keyword, all right, report is going to give, all right, to us. So let's go back to pipeline. All right, and let's see what we'll have now. So click on the pipeline, all right, and let's see what that would give us. All right, so that will, of course, it's gonna run as usual, all right, take some time, and then let's see what the report keyword, all right, will give us in this instance, okay? All right, so let's wait for that a bit, and let's see what we have. Now, if you look at this now, this has been generated successfully. All right, if you click here, all right, under the job, all right, you can see that it says uploading active fat and then uploading active fat as well. All right, so we can see that this was generated successfully. So let's go back to, all right, you know, if you click on active fat here as well, all right, you should see, all right, the active fat that was generated. So if you come here also, if you expand this, all right, you can see the activefat.zip. You can see the JUnit, all right, file as well. Okay, so if I go back to the pipeline, all right, and then I click on the pipeline also, all right, let's see, all right, what we're going to have. So now here, under the test tab, you can see now that we have this test tab now has been populated. Initially, we didn't have anything here, right? Because, I mean, if I go back to the other jobs, all right, just to show us all of this, if I go back to the other job and I click on the previous one, right, I can see here, sorry, if I click on the job here, or basically, let's see, um, the job, all right, now let's go to pipeline. All right, so if I click on this pipeline, all right, the previous pipeline, all right, before the one we just ran, okay? So here you're going to see that it says test is what is zero, and it says there are no test reports for this pipeline, all right? But if I go back, all right, to the just, you know, executed pipeline, and I click on that, all right, now here you can see that I have three tests, all right, and that is basically the number of tests that we have, all right, in our pipeline. So if I click on this three test, here you can see that it tells us clearly, all right, that the three tests passed, all right, it's given us the total, and you can expand and see, you know, all of the tests, actually. So we can see that we have one main dot index, you know, index.html file, there's a Docker file test, there's a git ignore file test. So you can actually see all of the tests that you've configured inside, all right, of your pipeline. And you can see, all right, the ones that passed, and of course, you can see the ones, all right, that fails. Okay, so if you can click on it to show you the name and then the time it took, all right, to execute, all right, that test. So with this, you can actually visualize your test result and then see if any test fails or, you know, whatever it is that happened, all right, and all of that. Now, of course, if you go back here and delete your Docker file, let's just simulate a failure here. All right, let's delete that and let's push that back into the repository. All right, now the test result should fail. All right, we should have one failure, basically, okay? Even if the pipeline will succeed, all right, we should have, you know, one uh, test failure, exactly, all right, actually. So... This is running already. So let's see what we have now. All right, so this is running. So let's just wait and see uh, what's gonna happen. All right, with this now, all right? So this actually failed, all right? So let's see. All right, so look at that. It failed because, I mean, there was one file that was missing. So, and the rule basically is, you know, if your code or your job does not execute completely, right? If there's any failure in that job, the job automatically fails, okay? So this failed because, I mean, this file was not present. And so it actually failed because the condition says it has to be true, which means this file must actually what exist, exists, all right, in this particular repository. And unfortunately, the file was not found, right? So if I go back to pipeline, all right, and then I click on this pipeline, all right, and then here I can see one field job, 
Okay, it shows us that, you know, a job field and then it will give us some information. And then here I can see the three tests, but now I can see that there is one failure. All right, so here I can see the status. So it says that this actually failed. So here, this can also help you to do some troubleshooting to know, you know, what actually happened, where did the failure happen and all of that. And then you can use this to narrow down, all right, you know, to what went wrong and then you are able to fix it, all right, very quickly. Okay, so that is basically how to, you know, use the test report, all right, to, um, you know, import that into GitLab and then with GitLab, you can also visualize, all right, your test report or your test results, all right, as well. Okay, now the next thing I want us to do now is basically we need to start building, all right, our application, all right, we need to package it into, all right, a Docker uh, image and then run it as a container, okay? So what we need to do is to create the Docker file again, All right, so we need to create a Docker file again. And this time around, all right, we need to specify, all right, from, and then the base image is gonna be node, I think uh, we're using node, um, let me see, 22, right? So let's use this one, instead of just specifying latest. So we're using this base image, all right, for application. And so here, we're gonna set a work directory, all right? So the work directory is gonna be usr, all right, slash src, all right, slash app. All right now, if you're using a node image, that is actually the default all right location where your application is actually being executed. Okay, so that's going to be our work directory. So now, what what are we doing after that? So we're going to execute some copy command. All right, so some copy command here, and we're going to be copying all right, you know, everything that we have in this app folder. Now, now not everything at this point, but we're basically going to be copying the uh, the package.json. Because the first thing we want to do is to actually install, you know, all of the dependencies. So we're going to say package, all right, package asterisk dot JSON, okay? So basically, what we are saying here is that we want to copy, all right, everything that is, you know, um, anything, all right, that start with package or JSON. I mean, that is the file that contains all our dependencies, right? So we're basically trying to copy that package of JSON so that the first thing we want to do is to install the dependencies. And then once the dependencies have been installed, we can now copy the code, all right, into that location and execute it. So we're basically copying this, all right, into, all right, this particular location. So I'm copying, all right, from app. So I'm basically copying package of JSON. I'm copying into, all right, this app folder, all right, in this work directory. And once that is done, we need to run, all right, the npm install command. So npm install, all right, we need to run that command, right? So basically, this is my work directory. So whatever it is that I'm executing, I'm actually working inside of this directory. And that is what work directory basically means, all right, when you're writing a Docker file, right? It means that you are working inside of this directory. So whatever it is that I'm doing after this point is actually within, all right, this directory that I'm doing all of that. Now, when the npm install has been executed, so you can now say copy, all right? So I'm copying now dot slash, all right, app, and then I'm copying it into my current working directory. Okay, so basically I'm copying now everything here. So I'm copying server.js, I'm copying server.test.js, I'm copying package.json, I'm copying index.html, all right, I'm copying every of those things, all right, into, all right, my work directory. Okay, and then the next thing here is to expose our port. So the port I'm going to be exposing, my Node.js actually works on port 3000, so we need to expose that also. And then the next thing you need to do is to execute, all right, you know, the same way um, if you come to your terminal, the same way you do npm starts, okay? You have to also put that, all right, in your Docker file as well. So the way to do that is to specify the CMD, all right, keyword, which basically allows you uh, to set your executables, all right, and to be able to run some executable commands. So remember, we are still in the work directory and our server.js is right in that location, okay? So here I'm just going to open a square bracket and then I'm going to say npm, all right, comma, okay? So npm, comma, and then what I might try to execute, so I'm trying to say start. Okay, now don't forget my server.js is already inside of that work directory. Okay, so if I do npm start, it's as good as you know, mean going into the app folder and then running my npm start the way I would do on my terminal. All right, so that's exactly what we are doing right now. So, with our Docker file is actually ready, so now we can do a book, go back now and say git add. 
all right and then execute our git all right you know this thing is behaving oh all right now i see why the git ad is not working guys all right the reason why the git ad is not working is because i am inside of the app all right folder you look at it here i'm inside of the app folder that's why the git ad is not working for this because this docker file is outside all right of the app folder okay so and all right so that's why it's the git ad is not i mean it's not seeing anything so i need to go back outside all right and then i'll do my git ad now and then this should work look at that so it worked already so that was a mistake that we made in that other video okay so i believe we're learning okay so it's a good one that we're facing these challenges all right i mean that would help us to learn all right when we encounter some of these things so i will now say docker file add it all right now i can do my git book okay all right now so now the pipeline should be built all right and the pipeline should execute now all right and we shouldn't have any failure all right again because i mean the docker file has been added now okay so once this part once this stage you know finishes then we go into building all right and pushing our docker image all right to the repository all right interestingly okay gitlab also has its own all right docker registry and so we're going to be pushing into the gitlab docker registry or right? we're not going to be pushing into github or into sorry into docker hub or into uh, amazon ecr we are actually going to be pushing all right into the gitlabs all right container registry i mean if you scroll down here under this uh under up no, under deploy actually you can see a container registry right here so if you click on container registry this is actually where you can actually upload all right your container email and you can also see the commands right here i mean it's giving us all the commands that we need all right in order to authenticate with all right the registry so in the next video we're going to see how to build the image and then push into all right this container registry that gitlab also has provided for us as part of the gitlab ci cd okay Thank you guys and I'll see you all right in the next video.